year marks 20 years since the death of 10-year-old Damalola Taylor, which shocked the nation. Capital Extra uh, radio DJ Yinky Bikini grew up on the same South East London estate. And in a documentary airing tonight, really powerful documentary, she remembers the life of her friend and the impact on their very close and very loving close-knit community, actually. Yinka joins us now from uh, Global Studios in central London. And you, your face hasn't changed a bit, actually. You still look <laughs> like that little girl. But you were so contained and so thoughtful as an 11-year-old. How does it feel when you look back at that little girl and all those emotions and that confusion that you must have felt at that time? It feels really harrowing, to be honest. Mm. Um, I look back at, at myself as a child and think, wow, you had to grow up overnight. I think, wow, this is the first time that you experienced somebody close to you dying and there wasn't much care or safeguarding in place at the time. I mean, the only person who came to speak to us about our friend's murder was um, BBC with the panorama and, and a camera. So having some distance 20 years later, uh, doing this experience, making this film, has really made me realise how important it is to protect children and, and to have conversations with them about grief and about, about loss, really. Yeah. Uh, Yinka, you know, often when these very tragic moments happen uh, and we, we watch on as observers, often the, the conversation is about the justice, you know, what justice is going to happen to these cases. And we, we know the story of Damalo, it took some while until any kind of justice was served. But we never really delve into the life of the victims. We never hear so much about them. And I think what you have done has really shone, shone a light on Damilola's life and his friends and the place he grew up with. This documentary, I, I, I sort of deploy everybody to watch this. It's just fascinating. Tell us a little bit about it. I, the one thing I really picked up on was the day you were in, in this estate in Peckham and the day that Damilola even arrived when he, was, when he came from Nigeria with his, with his family at the time. Yeah, so I only knew him for four months. I think when you're 11, when you're a child, that seems like a lifetime. I think we make our, our biggest connections and the things that mean the most to us. I mean, it's the first year we go to secondary school. It's when our lives change, and that's when he came into our lives. Um, we lived in a place where you had to be able to look after yourself. You had to be loud and boisterous, you know. There was a group of kids, maybe eight of us, maybe nine of us, who used to hang out and go and cause mischief. And he really, really fit right in. I think it's so important to to show this about him because, you know, the, the media and the story that has been for the last 20 years really does... It doesn't show that he was one of us. It doesn't show that he had friends. It doesn't show that he was loved and that we mourned him. I think it shows that, you know, he, he landed in Peckham and then he was killed. And yes, of course that happened, but there's so much in between. And I didn't want to concentrate on the people that took his life. I didn't want to concentrate on the facts of the case because we all know them. I wanted to tell the story from our perspective, from the people who knew him's perspective and to try and give his family something and, and do something for our area that's been you know, tarred and, and feathered throughout the, the last two decades. And what was interesting, too, was how um, you say that after Damalola's um, death, actually, the estate, everything sort of disappeared. It was demolished, it went. The families moved away, which obviously is understandable and was probably inevitable anyway had Damalola not died even. It, perhaps that whole estate would have disappeared. And the idea that, in a way, that you you buried that part of your life away, that, that connection to that place. And what was it... What, why is it important to you now as an adult to go back and reconnect with that place that obviously held a lot of love for you but also an awful lot of tragedy as well? And the people that came from there... I mean, you've become very successful. There is another very famous actor, Ashley Walters, who came from that very same place. Just tell us a bit about what that place brought out in you. Well, it's not just Ashley Walters and myself. We're not diamonds that are, are, are from the dirt. We're not roses that grew from concrete. I mean, you know, Damson Idris is an extremely successful actor and he grew up in my house. You've got John Boyega. You've got Giggs who grew up in, in, the, in the same block that Dammy lived. You know, it, it's that thing of there is something in the water, in the soil of these places that does breed a certain type of resilience and a certain type of creativity. I think... It's quite hard for people to to understand how I can uh, bury something and, and not speak about it for two decades. But I think when something holds your saddest memories, mm. when there is a grief there that is yet to be unpacked, it, it really is the easiest thing to avoid physically and emotionally that issue. Going back was really tough and, and I had to confront a lot 
but I'm I'm really glad that I did, and I, and I hope that I just hope that the I know the story's sad, and I know that the story isn't one that's sunshine and rainbows, but I do want the film to have a sense of hope in it. And I really want people to to watch it and just to understand where we are coming from and, mm. you know, the sort of people that that existed at the time, the community mm. that doesn't exist anymore really made me who I am. It's not an accident. Yeah, I mean, it's just what you said there, I think that's the important thing, is to realise, you know, where Dam and Lola came from. Often, you know, they people just become names, they just become stories. We forget that they are human beings, they're from families, they're from communities, and it's so important. What we're all going through now in this country, we're so, we're so divided that we understand each other's communities more. And I, I love the stories that you've talked about in an interview as well, where, you know, literally, you know, you were all one big family, weren't you, in that estate? You would, you would often all have you know, dinner in, in in one person's living room because either your parents were working late night, you know, somebody else's parents were your uncle and auntie. And I think that is a is a real sense of community. And the fact that Dan and Lola came from that is quite something. Yeah, and, and he was welcome and he was loved and, you know, he was loud and boisterous and all of these sort of things. And I think that that's the person that I remember. I don't remember this victim. I don't I don't recognise this this inevitable sad story. I, I remember my friend who, we used, we used to throw rocks at each other. You know, we used to do things that 10 year olds do. So even if you're not from Peckham, if you're not from a council estate, if you're not from social housing, you were once 10, you've got children who are 10, you've got nieces and nephews and neighbors. And that's what he was. He was a 10 year old boisterous boy, but mm. he was 10. And he did, he had a bit of a crush on you, didn't he? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I, I realised that... Um, <laughs> I, I said that a lot when I was younger as well, and I'm, I feel very cringe at the fact yeah. that I kept saying that. I'm sure he'll probably, he'll probably deny it, knowing, you know, for what, how you've described Damalola is a bit bullshit. I love the fact that you talk about what you think what Damalola would be doing now, and you've sort of mm -hmm. said, you know, he, you know, he could have been, in your words, a doctor or, or a lawyer, and that's, that's the, one of the sad things, isn't it, really, that, you know, he, he was such a bright lad, he could have, could have been doing anything right now, couldn't he? You don't, we don't know, you know, he, he, he could have been a doctor or a lawyer or any other career that our Nigerian parents suspected of us. I don't even know <laughs> if we would be friends, you know. Yeah. I don't know if he'd hit me up on Instagram and I'd be like, oh, God, I used to live next to this guy. Like, <laughs> I have no idea, but I think it's, it's the wonder and the what if that really kicks me in the gut when I remember him because the happy memories, I think... The, the great times of my childhood, remembering, like, barbecues and water fights and playing games, are tinged with this... It's just like a sadness that I can't, yeah. I can't get rid of. Mm. And Yinka, is the biggest thing for you, in a way, that going back to somewhere that, as you say, contained a lot of sadness and a lot of national tragedy, but to remember that there was love and that there was happiness there and that one place doesn't just become sad because of one thing, but there was so much that came before that moment? Yeah, and, and I think doing this experience, going through this process and literally bearing my soul for now the nation to watch, has made me realise that more than one thing can be true. You know, I'm allowed to have memories that are beautiful. I'm allowed to remember my friends and now having had time to reconnect with them. But also, it is a place where an unimaginable tragedy took place and it, it was a place of violence, but that doesn't overtake the good times that, that we had and that definitely okay. existed. Incredible. Yinka, uh, really brave uh, documentary. Yeah, Yinka, it's, just, it's fantastic. Thank you so much for coming. Uh, you've, it's a fantastic tribute to Damilola Taylor. Thank you for coming on to Good Morning Britain. Your documentary, uh, Damilola, The Boy Next Door, is on Channel 4 at 9pm on 28th. Yeah. Uh, what nine... time are you on the radio um, today? I like a bit I'm of I'm on now. Extra. <laughs> Are you on the air now? Yeah, I'm I do the breakfast show. I finish at 10. Are you... I was, oh, I, right, blind me, right? You better get a song on. I thought you were playing a very long... Are you playing a very long <laughs> song or something? Or what are you doing? Is it a remix? Bohemian or? Rhapsody. <laughs> Thank you, yeah, could be, yeah. Well done. Um, right, well, we'll tune in yeah. in a bit. See you later. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. Uh, honestly, if you do get a chance, it's on Channel 4. Even if, you, if you're watching something else tonight, try and watch it on all four. Uh, uh, it, it is uh, a really important documentary to watch.